four, three, two, one, zero. Mafia, z here with you on a special edition of the Smoke Break. All off-season, Fanatics has been bringing you exclusive interviews with the Bills' best, and today is no different. I'm joined by Bills' offensive guard, Ike Boddicker, and I'm going to bring him in right now. There he is, looking great. Ike, how you doing, man? Appreciate you joining the show. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. How's the off season going so far? Oh, it's been awesome, man. Workouts have been great. Hanging out with family here in Iowa. So, you know, the weather's not much different than Buffalo. Right. Just enjoying it and, you know, starting to ramp things back up. So I'm I'm enjoying it. Speaking of Iowa, I have to say, thank God you're a Bill because my <laughs> family is huge Penn State football fans. We don't take very kindly to Hawkeyes around here, but you're a Bill, so we'll forgive you. Yeah, I never beat Penn State, so I don't have much to say about that. Well, here's my well, here's where my resentment was really born. It was back in 2009. Penn State was ranked fifth. College game day, prime time at Happy Valley. I was at the game, 12 years old. First play from scrimmage for Penn State, 79-yard touchdown in the rain, 110,000 going nuts. From there, it was over. Iowa beat the living crap out of Penn State the rest of the game. So we walk out of there thinking it's going to be a rout because Iowa wasn't even ranked. Penn State was right up there first play of the game we're like oh my god this is going to be great iowa destroyed him the rest of the game so thank <laughs> god you're a bill Ike. absolutely you're good in my book oh god so let's get after it for starters congratulations on signing the new deal with the team we are excited to have you back what a wild start to your career that you had you you, you go undrafted the bills sign you then the chiefs take you on and almost immediately after that you're back to Buffalo and you find yourself in a huge role last year. And now you just inked a new contract a week ago. Let's look back on your journey. Walk me through it. How much does it mean to you personally to have earned that new deal and to have gotten where you are in your career right now? I mean, it was just really a grind for me. Um, you know, being at Iowa, great O-line tradition there. Um, mm -hmm. I was set to be a, you know, a three-year starter at tackle. So, was really hoping to get drafted and plan planned on getting drafted. Uh, blow my Achilles out the second game, my season, senior season. And then, you know, basically from then on, I just kind of started taking it one day at a time, not knowing, you know, if I would ever play football again or what it was going to look like, because I think it's one out of three um, Achilles, you know, injuries come back and play, you know, at, at their level or, you know, ever get back to where they were before. And, you know, I just feel very blessed and excited, you know, to get that opportunity to, to come to Buffalo. And then, like you said, got released and was going to sign a practice squad contract with the Bills, then got claimed by the Chiefs, you know, before I could do that. And then the Chiefs tried to sign me to a practice squad contract and the Bills claimed me back. So it was a, it was a crazy introduction to the NFL for sure. But you know, I wouldn't wouldn't trade it for anything. And, you know, I think that really fits in with the Buffalo, you know, mantra and mindset. You just have a chip on your shoulder from from there on out. And, you know, I've, I've just tried to carry that, that into the way I play and prepare and, you know, really every part about my game. That's why I love stories like yours, especially pertaining to Buffalo, because like you mentioned, it just fits the Bills mold perfectly, you know. Nothing's easy. You got to grind for everything that you get. That's the city of Buffalo in general. That's the team. And for you personally, you go through all that and you find yourself in a role you hadn't really found yourself in with Buffalo last season. You became a full-time starter about halfway through. You start seven games and then all three of the playoff games. So last year, huge role for you. Looking back on it, how do you attribute your own success to where it got you just a season ago, really being a centerpiece of the offensive line for Buffalo. I just, you know, those first couple of years, I just tried to prepare every week um, like I was going to be playing, knowing, you know, in the back of my head, I was probably going to be inactive 
um, probably not even dress on game days, but I just always tried to have that preparation piece because you know how with injuries, anything can happen. Um, and I knew I've seen guys get their shot and fumble it away. So I just wanted to be, you know, I want to, if I get my shot and it's here, I want to be ready to, you know, put the my best football out there. And then I got no regrets, you know, after that. But if I don't prepare like that, then I'm going to be regretting that, you know, for the rest of my life because then that I didn't take advantage of that opportunity. So that's kind of how I saw right. it. And that's kind of how I was raised. And then also how I was coached at Iowa. So just trying to take advantage of your opportunity. And then once you get it, just try not to let it go and do what got you there. It never is easy in the NFL, I feel like. Even when you have a job, it's never set in stone. And the competition on the offensive line for you guys last year was in full force. It was. It, it seemed like there was constant changing of the guard. Um, you never really knew who was going to be in the starting position for the Bills offensive line last year. And now just over the weekend, the Bills draft three offensive linemen, bring them onto the team, including Spencer Brown, right, who played football in college not too far from where you were playing. Yeah. And then in the free agency, you bring on Jameel Douglas, Forrest Lamp. There's going to be even more competition on the line this coming season. I'm interested to, to hear from you. What does that do for you psychologically in regard to motivation? Is that a big motivator for you, knowing that you're constantly having to earn each and every game that you're out there starting? Um, I honestly don't view it like that. Mm -hmm. Uh my motivation more comes from my personal ability and what I know that I can do and seeing and finding ways on how I can make myself better. So right. just that improvement, like even today in virtual meetings, we were watching some clips from last season and, and going through some installs. And I just was seeing stuff on film that was like pissing me off that I was doing. Yeah. So it's like, that's my motivation is like seeing those clips and then thinking about them and being like, all right, I played okay last year, but really last year would be considered, you know, my rookie-ish year. This is the first time I ever got to actually get in a rhythm and go out right. there and play. So knowing what it's like, knowing what the competition is like, you know, on the other D lines and knowing that you have to be on point basically 24-7, um, I'm just looking for ways. How how can I get my body in better shape? How what what weight do I want to play at? What do I need to get stronger at? What do I need to get better at to you know take those leaps um, this year? And then obviously competing for a job. I mean, I'm not saying I'm going to be starting. I'm just saying that's what I that's what I'm focused on is is bettering myself. So you really find the motivation for yourself within yourself. You go back, you watch what you're doing, you try to learn from everything that you do personally. Yeah, and then I, I love watching other guys in the NFL that are really good at the guard position, um, putting on their film and seeing what right. they're doing and trying to, you know, some guys are just physical, absolute freak shows, so, do stuff that, you know, certain guys won't ever be able to do, but I can do some things that other guys won't be able to do. So kind of trying to find a similar body type to mine that I can mold my game after a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's something I, I enjoy doing as well. So to that point, then coming up, was there any particular players at your position that you tried to model your game around as you went into college, maybe even back in high school? I was a quarterback in high school, so really? I was never really watching a ton of O-line o line stuff in high yeah. school. Uh, college, I mean, I didn't really even have to watch other teams. I had a guy named Brandon Sheriff, you know, for Washington football team. Mm -hmm. Um I, Andrew Denal is another guy that got drafted. Riley Reef would come back and train. Marshall Yonda was always training. So, you know, I didn't really have to go too far at Iowa to find guys to talk to and, you know, learn from. Um, in the NFL, it's still a lot of those Iowa guys. I still have a lot of connections with them. And talking with them, you know, week to week when I started playing, like I would call Sheriff and be like, what do you think of this D-tackle? What do you think of, you know – what what's his favorite rush moves before I even started watching film so I could know what to look for and, you know, start putting a game plan together for myself. Can't let what you just said go by. You're, you're a quarterback. It was quarterback or cornerback. You said quarter quarterback. Yeah. Quarterback in high school. I don't know. If I've ever heard of a quarterback transition to the old line. 
what was it like moving from such a different skill set to going and blocking for the position that you had played in high school? It was a wild transition. Uh, I think my, so I went to Iowa as a tight end. So I knew I was going to be switching positions. And then the first bye week, my freshman year, they're like, Hey, we don't have very many tackles coming up. Um, at the University of Iowa at that time, we had like a third round pick, George Kittle, and two first round picks right. that were coming in after, you know, that they, that ended up coming in after me. So looking back, I'm real happy that I, uh, you know, switch because I was good. I was a solid tight end. I was going to play, you know, probably two or three years. Um, but I wanted to get on the field for sure my sophomore year. Um, so I was like, absolutely, let's do let's do this transition. So I put on, you know, about 80, 90, 100 pounds and just tried to learn, you know, as fast as I could how to how to be a good, good offensive lineman. Walk me back to a high school Ike Boddicker. Could you have ever have envisioned yourself playing in the National Football League on the offensive line? Did it ever cross your mind? Not even once. That is unbelievable. And look where you are today. So true. So if, if anybody's listening who's in a similar position where you switch positions, essentially the, the moral to your story is anything's possible. Literally. Absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. I guess we know if Josh and Mitch go down, Ike is ready to get behind center and drop back. God <laughs> willing, right? I'll, I'll, I'll let him throw me in there if I need to. Speaking of the uh, the draft, bringing a few other guys in on the line. I always wondered this from NFL players. Do you watch the draft? Do you get into it at all? I sometimes do. because If I have some buddies that I think might get drafted, you know, I would mm -hmm. like to see them get drafted. I was undrafted, so, right. you know, I'm like really whatever about the draft. <laughs> yes, um, exactly. And I had one of my buddies' weddings this weekend, so I didn't get to see much of it. Um, but, you know, it was really fun to see Spencer Brown get drafted because I had I had literally been talking to him probably, probably two or three times a month for the last few months. Really? We just have a lot of uh, mutual friends and – I heard a lot of good things about him from, you know, a coach that I know at the University of Northern Iowa and really never heard a bad thing about him. So I was like, come on, get him, get him. Well, well. and then and then he's jumping through the table draft night. Did you see the video? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's already like number one in, yeah. in, our, in our book. I mean, you can't beat that. Yeah, absolutely. He's Tough a freak, man. too. I mean, his size, he is a massive dude so have you talked to him since the bills picked him oh yeah i i, I text him right after so what what is uh take me through the conversation there what do you say to spencer after the bills take him and what's your advice to him moving forward i mean just excited for him and his opportunity and just told him i'd help him you know yeah. whatever he needs just give me a call uh my rookie year I didn't really have anyone like that. And it would have been mm. super nice to have someone like that. So I, I just straight up told him like, you don't even have to think twice, whether it's, you know, where you want to go out to eat, where you want to try and live. And then yeah. obviously anything about football, just give me a call, FaceTime me, whatever you want. And, you know, I'll try to help you. I, Iowa boys got to stick together. No doubt. How great is that, that you already have a rapport with him as he's coming in? Like you said, I feel like, you know, no matter what you're doing, whether you're, at the stage you're at, go into a football team or whether you're starting a new job, moving to a school, it's always nice to have somebody. When I went to college, I went with a, one of my best buddies from home, and I look back on it all the time. If I hadn't have gone with him, I don't know what the hell that would have been like not having anybody there. So how great for you to kind of welcome him in with open arms. He already seems like he's ready to roll. I mean, he's diving through tables. He was with the family. They were going crazy. We we're like, oh, my God, we can't wait to get this guy out here. Absolutely, yeah. So, Overall advice, I guess, bringing guys in, I mean, Gregory Russo, I mean, Bean must have been taking a look at the potential college players that he could bring in and said, give me the biggest, baddest guys I could find. You got Greg Russo coming in. You got Spencer Brown. Overall advice, uh, now that you're a few years in with Buffalo, to a couple of these young guys making their way into the city, what, what would be your overall advice if they were – just kind of looking for some general info about the team, about the city. What would you provide to them? 
first things first, you got to take care of football. So you got to dive into the playbook. You've got to learn that inside and out. And being a rookie in the NFL is an interesting position because you go from being a top dog to, you know, getting dra- you're getting drafted. So you're probably the best one or two players on your team mm-hmm. to, you know, you're at the bottom again and you got to, like, you just, your rookie year, you kind of just have to soak it all in learn as much as you can early in camp and go out there and compete without saying too much. That's my, that's my biggest advice to rookies because I mean, I don't, I wasn't, I didn't speak unless I was spoken to my rookie year, and even to an extent my second year and older guys really respect that. They like that. And then they're more willing to help you become a better football player because they're the ones that have done it. Yeah. So why not try and get them on your good side and get the help from them that, you would like uh so that's my biggest thing i mean it's just like being a freshman in college again um and then you know you got a lot more money than you've ever seen and that's i love buffalo because you can live of iowa like life right in buffalo you know i i love that um i love iowa i love buffalo because they're basically just a midwest you know good old boys great food everything about it is just, you know, it's great. And you can focus on football. There's not a lot of distractions. Right. Um, so that's another thing that I really like about it. And that's a good point. So does that go a long way for you guys? Not really having much else going on in the city other than the bills. Yeah. I mean, it sucked last year with COVID cause we couldn't hang yeah. out, but like, we don't really go out. We just go to somebody's house and hang out and watch, you know, monday night football together and that's that's how you build a team uh right there and that's that's what sucked about last year but i mean we still had a good run but i think that would even you know bring us even closer together as a team just having those nights together and you know that's just like college and you don't there's just not many teams around the nfl that do that i talked to a lot of guys that you know i know that play and that's just not something that happens a lot it's something that i speak on all the time because that's that just it's visible the culture you guys have is so different than any other than i that i see and you just kind of spoke on it you've talked to guys and they don't experience it but even as a fan it just seems to pour out of your your guys team i've never really thought about the fact that it might be due to the reason that the team is in buffalo there's not a whole lot of distractions Does it also help for you guys that the majority of the team is fairly young? Does that help you guys kind of blend together a little bit? Yeah, I would think so. And then just the the vets that are there or that have been there, they're great guys. I mean, they're leaders and they're guys you can look up to and learn. I I just think of a guy like Lee Smith last year, you know, such a great leader, such a great guy in the locker room to have and just, not only football stuff, I learned so much family stuff and how to be a father. And, you know, when you can learn stuff like that from a guy in the locker room, that just changes your whole, your whole team really from the inside out. And that's what, you know, McDermott and Bean do such a great job of is getting those guys in there and having like a great ratio of young guys that are willing to learn. And then old guys that are teaching it the right way. So when you talk to these other guys around the league and kind of figure out that it's not, really what you're used to in Buffalo and what you really come to uh, accustomed to enjoying. Could you imagine being anywhere else after what you've experienced here in Buffalo? Yeah, no, I mean, I have no idea what it would even be like, but it just sounds honestly miserable. It's just so much fun being a part of a team like that, you know, and then Josh is to credit too. When you have a quarterback like that, that's so competitive and just puts everything out there every game. I mean, who doesn't want to play with a guy like that offense or defense um, really. So you, you all rally around a guy like that and makes everybody play harder and just more fun. It just makes football so much more fun. Let's talk, Josh, you're the front wall protecting him. I mean, you guys go to war together. That's what it is. He's the leader of the, of the platoon and you, you guys are in front keeping him safe. What's it like blocking for Josh and then watching him ascend to what he did last year? Do you almost you you have to take some sort of pride in that, right? Watching how much he has progressed up until what he became last year, and then you being a major part of that 
being in front of him help leading the charge? Yeah, I mean, I just I got to give a lot of credit to Josh himself, yeah. just the work that he puts in in the off season and improving, you know, everything really about his game uh, from year to year has been so fun to watch since we came in together, um, and you really saw that take off this year, and it was you know it was so fun to watch and be a part of, honestly. Um, so really, the credit goes to him putting in the work in the off season, and then just knowing that you know we got to we got to give him time because you can, you see what he can do if you give him time. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, another motivator for me is, you know, everybody wants to win a Super Bowl, so he can do it. We just got to give him time to do it. Is it kind of a relief knowing if, if the line breaks down that he can literally create a play out of anything, is there a relief to you guys on the line knowing if something kind of goes haywire, you got a guy behind you that can make a play out of almost anything. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we try to limit that as much as right. we can. And uh, especially early in the games, you know, just letting him settle in a little bit and then he just takes off. But, I mean, he makes us look good. So how can you not <laughs> love a guy like that? <laughs> that uh, And so it's like a give and a take, you know. We try and do whatever we can for him. And, and then he bails us out sometimes. And that's just, that's what a team is about. Um, and that's what makes it so much fun. They just picked up Allen's fifth year and they just picked up Tremaine's help me silence the critics here a little bit. Ike, Cause I, I don't know what's going on. There's a ton of fans who are stoked on Tremaine Edmonds. I love what he's bringing to the team. Although I'm seeing a lot of other people who are saying he's underperformed, but you are somebody who's lining up across from him in practice on a daily basis. What are you saying to somebody who says that Tremaine Edmonds has not lived up to his expectations? I mean, I don't watch a ton of defensive film, but I just know what he's like in practice. And I know that there's, I don't think there's a single linebacker that I've had to block yet that moves the way he moves sideline to sideline. Um, and just his size is Huge. out of, yeah, he's, he's a monster. So, I mean, I, I don't really have anything to say about that. I love Tremaine. He's a great guy and everybody on defense loves him and loves playing with him. I see. That's, that's what it seems like to me. I think people forget that he's only 23, despite the amount of time he's been in the league so far, but he's an absolute specimen. I just think at that position at the linebacker position, it's not necessarily like it's, what it used to be where you're making these insane plays you're in a position where you're, you know, you, you kind of take what's coming to you. And from what I've seen, I wanted to ask somebody who's across from him, like you are on a daily basis, because I just don't understand how anybody could kind of come to that conclusion at this point. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love Tremaine. I think he's a heck of a football player. Well, I love to hear it. Um, the season in general last season, uh, extraordinary. It was absolutely incredible for us to watch it, especially you know, just the way the year was in 2020. It sucked. And as you mentioned, it wasn't fun for you guys not being able to hang out with one another and whatever else. Um, multiple playoff wins, trip to the AFC championship. Just walk me through what it was like for you being a part of that team and the success that you guys experienced last year, especially, you know, since – the organization hasn't touched anything like that in well over 20 years. Yeah, it was just so much fun to be a part of, like you said. Uh, we really just took it week by week, day by day, and that's, you know, what made us successful. We never really looked too far ahead, and I don't think there was a single guy in the locker room going into that AFC championship game that even thought there was a chance we were going to lose. We just had that confidence um, in ourselves and in each other, and, the guy next to us um, obviously didn't go the way we planned, but you know, that's just motivation for this year. And it's exciting to know that there's another date with the chiefs that you, I know you guys have to have that one circled for next season. We can't wait to see it. The schedule's next week, right? The release next week. I got a feeling there's going to be plenty of games for you guys under the lights. Do you dig the primetime games? I mean, there's gotta be at least five, six of them coming your way this year. Yeah, primetime games are fine. It's just the only thing that sucks about them is when you are away and then you don't get home till three, four in the right. morning. Um, just for a recovery aspect. But obviously, it's fun playing in a primetime game, just especially being a guy from Iowa. There's not a ton of Bills games on back here. Yeah. So just for my family and friends to watch, uh, easier is 
is always fun, fun for them and, and me. Was the month of December kind of tough on you guys where you literally had a stretch of primetime games every single week? Cause that doesn't, that doesn't typically happen. Yeah. I don't know. We, like I said, we kind of just, we kept just rolling with it and right. Coach McDermott just took care of us and let us recover the, you know, the way that we needed to. So we were fresh for games and really all the credit goes to him for that because I think that's probably the most important thing when you get to that time of the season is just having guys fresh and ready to play. What's your personal thought on adding the 17th game to the season? I mean, I don't really see a reason for an, another game, but I mean, that's what the CBA, that's what happened in the bargaining. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, I think 16 is, was great. 17 would be fine. Still have three preseason games. Just as an undrafted guy, it's like you need those preseason games. Yeah. I, there's no chance I'm making – I'm getting claimed by the Chiefs if I don't have a preseason, my rookie right. year. So it's, I think that's pretty unfair to those guys last year especially. Um, See, that's But that's important you bring that up because a lot of players who have already established themselves in the league, they don't want – preseason games they're not thinking about the guys who are in that position and need them to prove their worth I mean you you speaking personally who knows where your career goes if you don't have those opportunities so you're a big advocate obviously of the preseason games yeah yeah I mean you need three is still fine three is plenty to get enough good film out there but I just have you know buddies on other teams that they don't ever really get a shot because they don't get they didn't get the snaps last year or they just don't ever get the the opportunity in the preseason to put film out there for the other 31 teams. You know, you only really got one, one team you can make at that point. What's the virtual experience been like for you and the guys? What's the adjustment been like for that? Are you used to it by now? Do you like it? How's that kind of going for you? Uh, For me, it's, I, I know the offense pretty well um, because I've done it for three years and you know, personally, I, I put the time in early to understand the playbook, you know, pretty well. So if I brush up on it, you know, a few times a week with these virtual meetings, you know, I'll be ready for camp when, when camp comes because I know the stuff. Um, but if this was like a, a new offense for me and I'd never done it before, it'd be brutal. Uh, you know, there's a lot of guys every year in the NFL that have a new head coach or a new right. offensive coordinator, and that would be – extremely difficult to try and learn virtually an entire offense with really no reps of walk through or anything. Was there a point in time where you thought Brian Dable wouldn't be your offensive coach this coming season? Cause we could not be happier to have him back. Yeah. I mean, it was hard to know with yeah. you know, how well we were doing and all the publicity he was getting and head coaching jobs opening up everywhere, but yeah, ecstatic to have him back. So during this virtual stuff, how much does it mean to have, him back in place, have the core coaching staff in place. Cause I'm, I'm assuming when that gets switched up with the virtual learning on top of it, no way that can be an easy fit. Yeah. It's fan, It's really great. And it's, I mean, it's a competitive advantage for us just knowing kind of what, what it's going to look like, uh, how he runs the offense. So that's, it's huge. And you're, you, the bills are one of the only, they're like one of five teams whose optional OTAs have, financial incentives if i'm not mistaken so that's got to be somewhat of an advantage to you guys too a lot of teams around the league talking about not reporting to these otas is that something you guys talk about knowing that hey maybe we have an edge up that we're going to report other teams throughout the league might not yeah i mean it's we'll see what happens with that um it's hard to really know and that's kind of like a players union front office battle i mean it's right just, it's kind of way over my head i'm i'm a team guy so if the team says we're going i'm going if they say we're going to do virtual i'm not going to be the one guy that shows up there and like looks like he's trying to get ahead of everybody else you know what i mean and i think we got yeah. a lot of guys on the team like that and we got you know older guys in leadership and guys that have been there longer and if we take a vote and it's one way or the other i'm going to ride with the the majority vote so I think that's what makes us special as a team and the chemistry we have as a team is we're going to do something. If we're going to do something, we're going to do it together and then we're going to make the most of it. And 
I mean, last year we went full virtual the whole time and turned out pretty well. So it's, you know, that's in people's heads too. Um, exactly. But we'll see what happens. Well, don't fix it. Don't fix it if it's not broken. Like I'll tell you that. Whatever you guys got rolling from last year, carry it into this year. Um, let's have some fun, Ike. Right, before I let you go, let's let Bills Mafia get to know you a bit better. Series of questions here to kind of pick your brain a little bit, get to know you. Right off the bat, Ike, what's your favorite movie? That's I was just talking. I think it's Wedding Crashers. Okay. Yeah. Big wedding. I, I hadn't seen it for a while. And then I saw it on TV randomly. Not a huge TV guy, but I have a kid and I'm pretty busy. But if I'm going to, I want to, I want to laugh. I'm going to watch a movie. So wedding crashers. I'm in the same boat. I'm not, see, I, I'm a huge TV guy, not a movie guy, but I, it has to be a comedy. I can't get in. Like everybody's like, like, for instance, the Oscars are last week. I didn't see a single one of those movies, not a single one. It's got to be funny or else I can't get into it. Um, favorite band. What's your favorite band? I'm an Eric Church guy. Okay, a uh, country, yeah, big Eric Church fan. So he's what my quarterback in high school or college. His dad actually has written 14 songs on his new album. What? Um, so big Eric Church fan, big country music fan. Are you gonna take advantage of that anytime and and get to meet him, or what's the deal with that? Yeah, probably. Probably go golf with them next summer or something. Oh, that's mid. You got to take full advantage of that. So yeah. is Eric Church on the pregame warm-up list, or is that not really the setting for it? I'm I'm a pretty chill pregame music guy until like an hour before, and then I get into, you know, some rap, some, you know, I got to get revved up for the game. Yeah. It, well, what's it? Josh listens to what? Is it, what is it? Johnny Cash or what? What is it? What is it? He, he does. I don't there? know. I don't know. But I, that's, a, that's <laughs> kind of, that's the kind of music I like to listen to. Right. Until about an hour before. So you, so you kind of like calm down and then an hour before, all right, we got to get in the zone here. Yep. I don't like to burn all that adrenaline off. No doubt. Good. All right. If you had to have like one album, I guess for that one hour that you just had to run through to get juiced, what would it be? <laughs> oh man. Or song, one or the other, album or song. If I had to pick, oh man, I know it's it's so tough. I try I just, to think I what I would make, do. I just make I just make playlists. Oh, perfect. So like I'll go in, I'll go in waves. Sometimes I like more like club music, like EDM, mm -hmm. like that kind of music, and sometimes I like more, you know, old Fifty Cent. Yeah, okay. I like I like old Fifty Cent. I'd probably go with that. I like that. That's a good choice. Yeah. Um, thoughts on cryptocurrency. Are you a crypto guy? I'm starting to dabble because yeah. Matt just wouldn't. Matt Barkley last year would not. Bitcoin leave Barkley. Like, Yo, know, I got to look into this. Yeah. I got to. So started talking to a lot of people and there's too many smart or people that I think are smart, intelligent people around my age or older that were telling me like this could be something decent for me not to do it so that's that's where i'm at with it it makes me feel so stupid is that kind of where you were when you first heard about it like i get so yeah. it's so over my head yeah, it's way it still is way over my head but for me the the you, you ever look at the dogecoin there see that's one i've never got into but i guess that's just going off dude i bought it i bought it at six cents it hits seven and I sold it and it's at 65 cents today. And I'm like, you know what? And I was thinking about, I wanted to pick your brain here. I'm like, you know what? Let me ask Ike what he's got going on with his crypto venture, because my, I was going to tell him, don't take any of my advice whatsoever. <laughs> well, I problem. haven't sold any, I haven't sold any and I bought it all probably three or four months ago. So I'm just letting it ride. Diamond hands, Ike. I guess yeah. we're gonna start. No, no, sell, no selling for Ike in the crypto <laughs> world. What's I? Uh, well, I guess before I ask you this one, thoughts on the uh, the white face mask being permanent this coming season? Yeah, so I had a hard time understanding if that was real or not because it was on <laughs> April first. So did I. So that is a hundred percent real. I'm ecstatic about that. I think those are sweet. I think. Well, the build the PR team. I think they meant. Like they did joke about it and then they said it wasn't a joke, but then we couldn't figure out if which one was the joke. Yeah. 
but we have been begging. It, it's so clean. It makes you guys look like a million bucks when you have those white face masks. On. <laughs> like I always go back to the Thanksgiving Cowboys game when you had yeah. the all blue with the. I mean, dude. Plus the game you guys had. Give me a break. That was that was that was mint. So that leads me to this favorite favorite uni combo for you. What what's like the one you're like? Oh, I love that. I mean, I think the reds with the white face mask might be too much almost. Yeah. Those that are be sweet. Sweet. And you want to know what? You guys like don't lose when you wear the when you wear the reds. Because like, that's like usually in a big moment. And I think you played what was last two years Steelers. ago was Pittsburgh, right? Last year was Steelers. It was. Yeah, that's right. I'm tr- two years ago. When did you wear the I'm trying to think. I remember it used to only be, and this is probably before you were even around, but this was, it, would, it used to always be against the Jets on like Thursday night. Then there was that colorblind game and they like banned it from <laughs> ever playing against the Jets again. So then it, it went into whatever it was, but um, that's right. It was the red last year because it was Sunday night football. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Big pick six from uh, Tehran. One of, one of two big pick sixes, of course. You know, I asked, I asked, I had Harrison Phillips on here a couple weeks ago. I asked him, I guess I'll have to ask you because I can never get enough of this. You're on the sideline for, for Terrence pick six against Baltimore. Just because the, when I, when I asked Harrison, he, he, he just smiled like a little kid going back to that moment. What was it like for you just being there and seeing that? Because at home we were losing it. There was fans there for the first time, you know, and forever got to see it. What was it like just being on this, like being out there for that? It was, I mean, such a momentum shift Ugh. for us. It just, I mean, it was, I mean, I was amazing. <laughs> yeah. That was, it's just like a big touchdown pass, but it's the defense, which is so much more rare. I mean, it's just yeah. rare to have a hundred yard pick six and it couldn't have come at a better time. So I, it was amazing. I, I can't get enough of talking about it because it, it's easily a top five play in the history of the franchise. And then and the moment it came, I mean, because it was just that whole game was a defensive slug, like slugfest. It was yeah. just back and forth. And I mean, you want to talk about flipping it on its head. But th- the best part was watching the sideline reaction and then everybody pouring down where that fan cam was. And it was in that moment where you're just like, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> I know. That was amazing. Uh, where where are you going? Where's the wing spot for you in Buffalo? Where's the spot? I'm a bar go? bill guy. All right. So that's what that's the answer I get from everybody. So is everybody usually on the same wave in the locker room? It's barbell. Yeah, we all if we're gonna have wings, we're gonna at somebody's house or whatever. I mean, I honestly haven't had a wing there that I disliked. No. But I just think bar bill has like that the clout, I guess you could say, around the they locker do. room. So I mean, everybody just kind of rocks with it. If if they're got somebody in town, they're gonna take them there. Cajun honey butter barbecue is my go-to. So, speaking of Harrison, I was talking to him, and he, I never heard of it. And he's like, "We go over to Jerry Hughes, we get like five hundred of these." And I'm like, "What is the the Cajun honey barbecue?" He's like, "You got to try them." So I literally that week, I live in Rochester. Me and my dad drove, got them, and we were like. Oh my God, he was not missing. What? But he said he got the advice from Kyle Williams, and I'm like, no way, Kyle Williams does not know what he's talking about when it comes to wings. <laughs> yeah. It's different than anything else, right? Those, those yeah. wings, you can't find that anywhere else. No, there's nothing like them. So before I let you go, um, the the off season, obviously, now it's in full swing. The draft's over, whatever else. Do you guys put in the rear view? last year or do you do you use it more as motivation what's kind of the mindset there do you try to kind of just get rid of it or do you try to put it in place as something to kind of fuel you moving forward and get over the hump of you know getting to that next step and getting to a super bowl uh i would say it's a little bit of both it's like you use it for co- like a confidence boost um like hey we can do this if we do the right stuff and then right. really right. after that you kind of forget about it. it's like Nothing's given to you. Everybody's going to be gunning for us even more, you know, after a season like that. So you real fast put that in the review and then just start working. I mean, honestly, you start working personally to get yourself better and better shape, whatever you need to work on. 
and then when you show up whenever we get together it's let's get it going i mean let's let's get the offense clicking defense clicking and let's have fun you know let's go win some games and uh try to win a super bowl i mean that's what everybody's goal is and you just got to take it like i've said one day at a time i mean starting at the beginning of training camp and just knowing that you know what it's going to be you know that the grind that's coming get getting through training camp and then the season starts and you got to turn it on that's a really good point you bring up you said everybody's going to be gunning for you did you feel that at all last season more like a, a, similar to how you feel it now or was it still kind of like that we have something to prove mentality i think that it's the we have something to prove mentality and i think we still have that i mean there's not really any complacency that I've felt from anyone, any position group or anything. And uh, I don't think that that's ever going to happen, to be honest. It's just not the way the team's built. That's what makes the Bills the Bills, man. I absolutely love it. Ike, 40-some minutes in the books. That felt like five minutes. You are a great dude to talk to. I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on. Enjoy the rest of the offseason. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back on the field in 21, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a blast. My pleasure, man. And you're welcome anytime. Hopefully, we'll get to do it again soon, all right? Sounds great, boss. Ike, take care. Have a good one. Ike Boddicker, an absolute stud. What a guy, man. And he's not – he's now the second guy to hop on and say the honey Cajun butter. I can never figure out how to pronounce it. But I feel like I'm plugging Barbell every time I hop on here. They're going to they're gonna need to start putting me on commission over at Barbell. But not not for nothing, I myself drove all the way down there and got him too. So you're probably thinking, how come every time Zbot has a Bills player on, he's talking Cajun honey barbecue wings? Well, because it's now basically the official wing of the Buffalo Bills, right? The big boys on the line, that's their wing of choice. So if you're listening, go try them. They're not messing around. They are that good. Believe me, I drove an hour and 10 minutes. Me and my dad got him, and we were like, oh, my God, like no doubt about it. And now I'll, I'll, every every week we're like, when are we getting to, when are we getting back down to Buffalo? When are we going down there? So, uh, Bar Bill, if you're listening to this, uh, hit my line because everybody is bringing that that wave onto here, and I'm passing it along to the mafia. All right, 45 minutes in the books, super fun. Ike Boddicker is the man, and I hope to have him on again soon. Real fun chat, and uh, just re-signed a deal to be back for at least next year, and hopefully. Well beyond that, looking forward to watching him again on the field next season. For now, thanks so much for joining me. We'll be back next week for another one. Until then, be safe, and as always, go Bills. Yeah, yeah.